Sutra, disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, suppose there is a person who, within the space of a single thought, is able to pass through a Sangiya world systems in the in the East. He does so in thought after thought like this, exhausting a Sankhya compass. No one is able to know the limits of all the world systems he passes through. Further, suppose there is a second person who is able to, in the space of a single thought, pass through all the world systems passed through by the first person in a Sankhya compass. He too passes through so many world exhausting as some here compass. This sequence increases until it reaches a tenth person in the south, west, north, the four intermediaries above and below. The same thing happens. Disciple of the Buddha, in the ten directions there are a total of a hundred people and each one passes through world systems in the same way. The limits of these world systems can be known, yet no one is able to know the limits of the gurus of the Bodhisattva who has first brought forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi. Commentary This section of text describes merit and virtue that seven greater than before, yet it still doesn't compare with the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who has rough thought forth the mind. So, Dharma Wisdom Bodhisattva says to the Heavenly Lord Chakra, disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, don't pay attention to the analogy spoken of before. I have an the analogy I tell you about. Suppose there is, there is a person who within the space of a single thought, within the so shortest amount of time, a single thought moment, is able to pass through Asamkhya world systems in the East. He is able to go through an immeasurable number of world systems in the East. He does so in thought after thought like this, exhausting Asamkhya compass. No one is able to know the limits of all the world systems through. No person can know ultimately how many there are because in a single thought he passes through immeasurable in the single thought he passes through immeasurable numbers of world systems. He continues like this exhausting Asamkhya compass that long a charm. A number of walls that he passes through in thought after thought is immeasurable. No person is able to know its limit. Further, suppose there is a second person. There is a second person who is also like this, who is able to, in the space of a single thought, pass through so many walls that exhausting a Samkhya compass. This sequence increases until it reaches the a tenth person. The tenth is not just the tenth person, it's the, the hundredth, thousandth, and ten thousandth. All of them are contained within this analogy. All of them are contained within this analogy. In the south, west, north, the four intermediaries above and below, the same thing happens. Each of the other ten directions is also considered in the same way as this analogy. Disciple of the Buddha, you should know, in the ten directions there are a total of a hundred people and each one passes through these world systems can be known. Can the limits of these world systems be known? They can, yet no one is able to know the limits of the gurus of the Bodhisattva who has first brought forth the mind for Anusara Samyak Sambodhi, that is to say, the resolve for the unsurpassed right and equal and enlightenment. No one is able to know the limits of his gurus. No person is able to know the boundaries of the merit and virtue from first bringing forth the mind. Therefore, we should not miss this opportunity. We also want to bring forth the great body mind. Sutra, why is this? Disciple of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva does not limit himself for the sake of going to that many world systems to attain understanding and knowledge. He brings forth the body mind for the sake of understanding the world system of the ten directions. 
he brings forth the Buddha mind, that is to say, he desires to understand that wonderful world systems are just cause world systems, and cause world systems are just wonderful world systems. Commentary Why is this disciple of the Buddha, the, Buddha, the Bodhisattva, does not limit himself? The Bodhisattva has nothing fixed about himself. Not limiting himself does not mean having no limit. Rather, it means that it is not fixed. He can be any way at all. No fixed dramas and no uniform limit. He does have to be a certain way. If one is rigid, then that is just having an attachment. If you say something is not that way, then that is also having an attachment. Therefore, not limiting himself is just having no fixed dramas. It's only for the sake of going to that many world systems to attain understanding and knowledge that he brings forth the Buddha mind. As it is said, at the extreme of stillness, he wants to move. He wants to look for some work to do. So he goes to world systems. He goes to these places looking for something to do. And there is basically nothing to do. Basically, there are no living beings to cross over, but he wants to go and cross over all living beings. And basically, all world systems are just false names, yet he wants to go to each of those world systems to attain understanding and knowledge of that many world systems. Now, here, the Bodhisattva wants to know more, therefore, he wants to understand whatever affairs they are in the world of people, so he says, to attain understanding and knowledge. He decides to seek knowledge. He wants to know everything. He really wants to know all about living beings. Therefore, he brings forth the Bodhi mind.